Okay, so I got a new iPad and I wanted to try recording a video where I just sort of, you know, write some notes on the screen and talk about some um, topic that I think I might be able to help uh, give some perspective on. Um, so mostly this is just a practice for this new technology I have. Um, so I'll just do something that I'm pretty familiar with and maybe, you know, I, I, I've talked about this in other videos where we talked about like support vector machines. But let's talk about Lagrangian relaxation in general. So let's talk about Lagrangian relaxation. Okay, there's my messy handwriting. Um, <clears throat> and what we're going to look for, uh, we're going to try to solve, uh, well, so this is a topic about optimizing um, some function with some constraints. So you want to optimize some functions, or maybe you're looking to minimize um, some f of x. So you have some function f of x, where x is in the uh, space of real vectors, of d-dimensional real vectors. And f, let's say it's a function that maps from uh, the real vector space to scalars, so just to the real number line. So f outputs some you know, score given any x value, and we want to find this, the x that gives us the minimum score. So uh, that's pretty standard. Um, you know, so, you know, people have done things like gradient descent uh, for this. But we add this other piece. So we're going to add that. Um, so let me see if I can try rewriting that. So we're going to add that we're subject to the constraint that I'm going to write it as this a x equals b. So uh, here we're we're going to have um, you know a a and x uh, or sorry a and b are, are other parts of the problem and let me move this up because this really belongs up here. All right. So then we have um, let's say a is going to be a real matrix of the size C by D, and B will be a real vector of size C. So what does this look like? So, so uh, in, in matrix form, it would look something like this. So let me just um, zoom this in, All right? So, so we have an X vector, um, looks something like this. So it's of size D, so this is D. And we have an A matrix. Let's see, this is uh, this is C, and this is D as well. So this is A. And we want that to be equal to uh, do that a little too tall. So I'm going to erase that. So it should be something like that size ish, and that's the B vector, and that's of size C. So that's what it looks like, right? So it was a, there's, there's, there's essentially there's a system of linear inequalities, sorry, not inequalities, linear equalities that are defined by multiplying the row of A by X, and that gives us the entry uh, in, in the B vector. So these are these are called linear constraints. Um, so right, we're basically saying these are linear constraints. So this is linear constraints. And um, and yeah, so this this is a, a classic problem. Um, you know, if the f is like uh, the uh, norm of x, and then the a's and the, and the b's can code the uh, whether the uh, whether data examples are correctly classified with the model defined by x. You know, we usually would write that as w. Um, that would be like the SVM, right? So this is a this is like the support vector machine. Um, but you know, with this is more generally described, right? So we can we're just basically describing any function that we're trying to minimize. And you know, just what this looks like in two dimensions is you might have. Let me draw this with a different color. You might have like a objective function that looks like this, uh, and we would have a constraint. So let's say the constraint is going to be a linear constraint, so it's going to be like that. And we're basically saying that you know we're looking for a point on this line, on this purple line. Um, that is that minimizes the objective value, so it would probably be around here. 
Um, and then, you know, this is kind of silly to draw in two dimensions because in, um, you know, in higher dimensions, there's much more uh, stuff going on. But in, in two dimensions, if you have a linear constraint, you just, you're just down to a line. In fact, in fact, if you actually have two constraints, if you have a second constraint, it would look just like this. Like it would basically pinpoint exactly where you can be in two dimensions. Um, so you can think of each constraint as essentially reducing the subspace of possible solutions to, you know, by one dimension. Oops. All right. So uh, let's continue on. So, so Lagrange, in Lagrangian relaxation, we solve these problems by, whoops, uh, by, by, by writing them in a different way. So we write them as this. We write it as, here, I'll write it out. Oh, that's too big. Let's try that one. Oh, that's all right. It's a little thicker than it was before. I like to, okay, let's try that. Okay, so bear with me. All right, so we're going to write this as the same form, except we're going to add a little bit of twist here. So it's going to be, we're going to say max over, I'll use lambda. That's the one I'm most comfortable with. So f of x plus lambda times a x minus b. So this does something weird. Right? So we've now created a, a new version of the problem where we have this max over lambda. Um, and I'll just write in the the, the, um, the the domain of lambda here. So it's going to be in the real values um, by c. So it's a length c vector in the real values. I'll just center that for cleanliness. OK, so. <clears throat> So this is the this is the new form of the problem, and it's actually the same thing. I haven't actually I have not actually changed anything. And the way that it's the same is that right, if um, if a x is equal to b, right, if a x is equal to b, this thing right here, that thing is going to be zero, right? A x minus b is zero if a x is b. So if, if if this is zero, then whatever the values of these lambdas are is also you know this whole term will all just be zero. Right, so, so, um, so if we satisfy the constraints, then this is just equal to f of x. If we don't satisfy the constraints, then here's what happens. Right, so if this is not zero, pretend this is not zero. Uh, for the sake of you know concreteness, let's just say it's one. Right, so so there's a violation of one. Um, the the lambda value can then be set to some some number such that this whole thing, when you maximize this whole thing, it becomes whatever, uh, you know, whatever this is, plus infinity. So you get this. Right? You can just set lambda to positive infinity, and that is multiplied by 1, and you get infinity. So th this is true, you know, even if it's not 1, if it's like 0 0.00001, like a small number, you know, you can still set lambda to infinity. And so any time this constraint is violated, the original constraint, which was written here, right, um, Anytime this original constraint is violated, even by a tiny amount, even if it's by this tiny amount here, you would, uh, this would, this whole objective here, this whole objective would go to infinity, and it would be, um, you know, not, it would not be good for this, right, this optimization. But uh, let me let me back up. So this this is what we've set up here is this min max problem. It's also called a saddle point optimization because um, if you try to visualize this, which is kind of hard to do, uh, or it's kind of hard to draw rather, you sort of get um, you know one dimension where uh, I guess you might draw. I'm going to try to draw a saddle point problem. It looks something like this. I don't know if that tells you anything, but but the solution we're looking for is something like over here, right? Where where the where you know, moving in any direction is, is basically flat. Whereas over here, it's like, um, uh, up here, it's it's um, got a lot of curvature in one dimension. And then if you look at the cross section, I guess it looks kind of like this. I don't know, maybe that's not that helpful. So let me, let's, let's not try to visualize it. It's, it's actually, I, I can't draw it. I don't know how to draw it. I need some better artistic skills to draw like a three dimensional thing to, to show this in as a visual. But but notice that here we have, you know, we have a max and a min. 
and they're they're fighting against each other. So so this is Lagrangian, or this is the first step of Lagrangian relaxation. We basically form this thing. This is often called a Lagrangian. And the, the basic idea is we want to solve for this this we want to solve this form. But of course, like I said, this we didn't change anything. So um, this is still the original problem. It's just written in a different way. So the way we get to a, a relaxed form is this. We actually flip we flip the the order of these and we write it as this. Actually, I'll just so this is an advantage of right, drawing an iPad. I can copy. I can paste this here, and let's get rid of that, and let's move this over here, let me get this right there, right. so now I've moved things around, All right, so I just swapped the min and the max, see how we swapped them, so now we're doing this first, so now we're going we're gonna to pick some lambda, and we're going to try to search for a good lambda, um, and whenever we have a good lambda, we're going to solve for the min, of this problem. And what usually happens is that this problem is pretty easy to solve because what it basically is is the original problem we had plus a linear term, right? So if, if lambda is fixed for any particular lambda, this is just a linear expression. In fact, if you break this apart, you get you know, lambda transpose a x minus lambda transpose b. This whole thing is not even relevant to the to this minimization, right? It's a constant. It's a constant with respect to x. So you you can do things like you know taking the derivative, right? Maybe the derivative here uh, or the gradient, right? So okay, let's call this whole thing. Let's call this whole thing L, right? So if you take the gradient of L with respect to x. You don't even have an entry that has to do with this this uh, lambda transpose b term. All you get is the gradient of f with respect to x, which we probably would have had to deal with anyway. Um, plus, let's see if we get this right. Is it just lambda transpose a, or is it a transpose lambda? I think it's a transpose lambda. I might have messed that up, but I always get the transposes messed up. But yeah, that, that's it. This is the gradient. So so it's like it doesn't really depend on b, which is kind of weird. Um, but then then I guess it's also useful to then write out the gradient of um, lambda. Or sorry, the gradient of l with respect to lambda. That is equal to. So that doesn't depend on depend on f at all. So that's actually just going to be equal to a x minus b. So so here's here's what, what one thing that's interesting is that. A lot of times, when you're just dealing with this part, you, you might have a closed form solution for this, right? You might have a solution where you can, you know, closed form, closed form, question mark. So if you have a closed form solution for that, let's just define that as, um, let's say that x, let's write, um, let's write this as x star. And that's an x star, is a it's going to be a function of lambda. It's actually, you know, really a function of lambda a, b, and f, but those are all given. So let's just say it's a function of lambda. So, so let's just say it, x star is going to be equal to x, such that let's just make it um, so that the uh, equals zero, right? So that's a zero gradient condition. Well, then we can write the whole thing, whole problem, as just maximizing over lambda over the possible lambdas of f of x star of lambda plus lambda transpose a x star of lambda minus b. Right, so now we just have a function of lambda. Right? This whole thing just depends on lambda. x is no longer really there exactly. Um, we just sort of have a formula for x. So uh, that's the basic thing, right? That's the whole thing. And, and, and so a lot of times we do have this closed room solution and we can just plug it in. And then we can do something like gradient ascent, right? We might just say um, it would look like this, right? It would just be 
we just update lambda with um, by adding the gradient of L with respect to lambda, which is equivalent to plus, uh, let's see, A X star lambda minus B. We just, and we just keep running that. Uh, you know, usually you would have um, that times some learning rate. And let's give this some numbers. This is T plus one. Okay, so we, have, we usually you'd have some learning rate and maybe you'd have something where like the learning rate has to um, sum to t equals zero to two infinity has to be O of one. And so you have some requirement that that, that it's a convergent um, series of, of lambda of alpha values. So that's the type of thing you might do. Um, and then what this does is you know it get it finds you a situation where um, uh, where you have found the maximizing lambda for the thing that, that minimizes, so the maximizing lambda for the thing that mi minimizes x. And that, that means that we've also found, okay, so now here's where some things uh, 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 require some caveats. So this is like a alternate, alternate form of the problem, which is often called the dual form. And if we have something called strong duality, this is kind of a circular definition. If we have strong duality, then um, I'll just write it this way. So uh, let's copy this. That no, like copy the whole thing. Let me try again. Copy, paste. If we have strong duality, then Bear with me as I work around this interface. Uh, okay, L is equal to that. Okay, so strong duality says this, that, that flipping, flipping the order of these gives you the same answer. And then that means that if we just solve this form, which is the dual form we just worked on, um, we can get the true answer to the original problem we wanted. But not all, not all problems have strong duality. So usually that often, in many situations that correlates with the convexity of the uh, problem and the constraints, but there's, there's other conditions that you have to consider. So, but, but a lot of times, like, basically you have to prove that you have the strong duality. And then once you have that, you can solve in this form. Okay, so I think I don't want to spend too much time on this because I'm like with, without, in this general form, there's not much else to say. Um, so you have to really dig into specific forms to start to talk about the properties of the algorithms. Um, but this is the basic idea behind Lagrangian relaxation. We basically write the problem as this dual form where we know we can now we now pick like a penalty term. This is basically you can think of this as a penalty term for how much you pay, for how much penalty you get for violating each constraint. And you then you search for what those penalties should be. Um, and you assume that the, the inner optimization finds the best answer given those penalties. And, if you, and the, the, the promise is that if you find the right penalties, you'll get the solution that satisfies all constraints. All right, I hope this is helpful in some way. Um, I'll try to do more of these videos. Um, and as I said in my last video, I've been trying to come up with a good uh, YouTube sign-off, so I'll 